Welcome everybody to the Bitcoin Show. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Bruce Wagner. And I'm Ed Gell. And today we have uh, an, a very interesting show for you. Um, we have with us um, a, uh, a very special person who has traveled across the country on the world's first Bitcoin road trip. And we're going to get to him in just one second. First, I want to thank our sponsors who bring us to you every day, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. All around the world, it's 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to dayandtime.com and see where that is, uh, what time that is in your zone. But um, we are in English language, 2 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday, and Spanish language, 4 p.m. every Wednesday. Now we're talking about adding several more languages. The Bitcoin show in several more languages, languages like Russian and Chinese and uh, Portuguese, Portuguese and so on. So anyway, we want to thank our sponsors who uh, bring us to you every day. And they are U.S. Gold Coins. USGoldCoins.com uh, will help you, and they're 1 800 hot coin is how you reach them. The best way to reach them is just to call them. Call up and ask for Andy Gauss. It's 1 800 hot coin, and Andy is the uh, world's preeminent expert in uh, money, and he'll help you invest in, diversify yep. your investments into gold and silver coins, rare US gold and silver coins. He's the expert, he's my expert. That's how I met him, and that's how he became a sponsor eventually because. He's a friend, like all of, all of our sponsors, really. Um, and Mezzi Grill, of course, the world's first restaurant that accepts Bitcoins. <laughs> They've been in all the media, all the news, our friend Marwan. Go ask for Marwan at Mezzi Grill, the most amazing food. It's our, one of our favorite restaurants, of course. That's how we met them. That's how they became uh, the world's first restaurant to accept Bitcoins and a sponsor. Ask for Marwan at Mezzi Grill. Uh, just a few blocks south of Columbus Circle when you're in Manhattan, New York City. M-E-Z-E grill.com. Check out their menu. It's amazing. And Carpe VM. It's C-A-R-P-E-V-M.com. Carpe VM video marketing. Carpe VM does um, your, your videos for your website from beginning to end. They're super professional. They'll help you sell whatever it is you're selling, your product, your service, your business, on the web using video. So as they say, seize your market, say it with video. CarpeVM.com. Thank Charlie there. And TradeHill.com, of course. TradeHill.com, the online exchange where you can buy and sell Bitcoins with ease. Many, many ways to get the money in and out very quickly. Um, you can use the uh, discount code 10% off. Uh, for life all on the fees for uh, with the discount code TH-R141, TradeHill.com. And our newest sponsor, MountGox.com. That's M-T-G-O-X.com. Everybody knows Mt. Gox. They're the, the uh, market leader and the, 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 uh, the exchange site that's been around the longest by far. And uh, they have uh, had recent hacks and so forth, but they're showing their re resiliency and their integrity by not going anywhere. They're here to stay. Mt. Gox, mtgox.com. We thank all of them for bringing us to you, the Bitcoin show. So um, thanks, guys. Thank you. Please be sure to thank our sponsors when you contact them. Even if you don't buy anything from them, just contact them and say thanks for supporting Only One TV and the Bitcoin show. So with us today, we have the person known as, the artist formerly known as The Real Plato. Everybody. <laughs> Hi, Plato. How you doing, Plato? Hey, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Is it morning there? <laughs> I guess it is still. Uh, it's 11.15 in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> wow. Right? And uh, it's like 3 a.m. in Australia, so it's morning all over the place. You know, uh, we, ha we did our very first episode of the Bitcoin show. We had uh, you, Plato, as a guest. Um, that's when Only One TV was pretty much our dining room table. And you remember, because you were there in person. And uh, oh, since then, and you know, it wasn't just, long ago either. It wasn't that long ago. I mean, the, the, everything's happening in internet time, internet speed, as we say. <laughs> and uh, you know, so you remember very well. This was like when you had just started your your trip, and we had said that we were going to give video updates uh, on the progress of your trip. Of course, that didn't actually manifest because so many things happened that we fell into this opportunity of this the, the whole fifth floor and this fifth avenue real tv studios we have here now three dedicated studios and all that 31 shows not just one i mean it's nuts what's happening and uh it's exploding it only one tv is exploding kind of like bitcoin is and we were not able to follow up with your with your road trip but everyone continues to ask whatever happened to plato did he make it 
So give us the, uh, the lowdown. And I, I really apologize that we uh, have been so uh, negligent to update people on your trip. But you, where are you at? What's and give happening? us the dates, approximate dates and stuff. Well, all right. Well, I made it. <laughs> you made it. We made it. Uh, so let's see. I left April 9th and about two months after that. So uh, mid-June, I got to Los Angeles. And between Connecticut and Los Angeles, I spent no dollars, which, as you may remember, was the goal of the entire trip. Connecticut to L.A., no dollars. That's right. No euros or pounds or British sterling, nothing like that? No, no. No fiat currencies. <coughs> uh, How did you do that? Well, I spent bitcoins exclusively. And <laughs> I did that through a lot of planning. So I started out at the very beginning of the trip going online and saying, hey, look, I'm interested in taking this road trip and funded entirely by Bitcoins. First Bitcoin road trip. Because I think it would be great for publicity for Bitcoin and I think it would be a great adventure for me. So I'm, I'm not entirely altruistically motivated here. But anyway, it was a fantastic adventure and I told hundreds of people about Bitcoin along the way. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling it a total success. <laughs> awesome. And you had, you were, had speaking engagements and everything, right? I, I spoke to a handful of hacker spaces, a couple of colleges, and many, many people just on the street. So, how, okay, so um, it was a total success. You only spent Bitcoins. I mean, was it your own Bitcoins or you got donations too, didn't you? Uh, for the most part, it was donated Bitcoins. I started donated. out with a couple hundred, mm -hmm. but... On April 9th, the Bitcoin was about a dollar. So right. my first to guess were 40 Bitcoins each. So wow. I blew through most of that initial couple hundred in the first you know, few states. Right. So, uh, now, now I take a guess is three Bitcoins. <laughs> so whoever was the first, whoever were the first few people, uh, I remember Drackling in uh, New Jersey, he especially managed to help me out in a somewhat tricky spot. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, everybody who's... Mm -hmm. You met with me, helped me out, sent me bitcoins, any support, because uh, really this this just like everything else, this was this was really a crowdfunded effort, crowdsourced effort, and you guys made it happen. So thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad we could help you. Uh, do you, have you disclosed how many bitcoins you went through, or or no? Uh, I had a <coughs> check in, oof, like four thousand miles, but last I checked, it was in the neighborhood of seven hundred ish. Which could be a variable in dollars because it <laughs> has gone up and down so fast. Right. It, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly a fairly significant amount. Mm -hmm. But I, it was totally worth it because every one of those Bitcoins, now somebody else has that Bitcoin. And they right. can put it into the economy. They can spend it. They can buy a Blue Canary Nightlight. <laughs> <laughs> Alpaca socks. <laughs> they can buy all kinds of things now. We get the Bitcoin world market. I don't know if you heard about that. We did, did the launch of that the other day. Bitcoinworldmarket.com, which is like the, the, the largest online retailer. Memorydealers.com. There's so many, um, many places that uh, we have now this new widget on bitcoinme.com where you click shopping and it scrolls by just hundreds and hundreds of items or thousands of items um, that you can buy with Bitcoin. It's really exploding. The, uh, oh, it's, it's, and we're, I mean, we're still at the very beginning. Right. Uh, <laughs> there's, it's, there's so much room to go up that, I mean, even, mm -hmm. even the markets that we have now, I mean, they're starting to take hold and I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. But mm -hmm. I think that uh, at least long term, we, we're, we're going way up. Yeah. Up, 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 as I say. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the word out on the street, like, when you were doing this? Did, what kind of uh, reactions, <coughs> any... Give us the best story and the worst story. You mean reactions when I told people about Bitcoins? Yeah, or just, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, almost everybody I talked to was very interested. I... For the most part, I would just find somebody on the street who looked bored and say, "Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm Plato. You ever you ever heard of bitcoins?" And of course, al almost nobody has. The only people I've met who had actually heard about bitcoins previously were, uh, you know, people from the Bitcoin forums and a lot of people at hacker spaces. Yeah, I'm actually at a hacker space right now called uh, Brain Silo, mm. and this is a Portland hacker space. It's so hacker space for anyone who's unfamiliar, it's it's an area for people to hack and make stuff. So it's not necessarily computer hacking. There's all kinds of oscilloscopes and a uh, resoldering or 
workstation over here and computer parts and CV radios. And it's a place for tinkerers. So th this one in Portland is really cool. And I went to uh, Crash Space in Los Angeles and uh, Noise Bridge in San Francisco. And all of these were filled with people who knew about Bitcoins and were really interested and wanted to learn more, wanted to get their own Bitcoins, and even people who were making their own Bitcoin projects. So little places like this, are they're doing a great job to you know, foster innovation. Mm -hmm. Or even you know, Bitcoin Labs right in Manhattan, right. Uh, or somewhere in New York. That's right. I saw that they recently, released, they recently released their uh, Android software. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you know, Bitcoin Labs is uh, the, the group that came out of our hackathon. Remember the, f the first episode you were on? We visited yeah. those guys in the lab over there. That's the hackathon group from our meetup that we host here at Only One TV, and that's what they call Bitcoin Labs. And yeah, they, they created the first Android lab, uh, app that's in the market, and uh, they're working on several other projects all at the same time right now. It's, it's exploding. Uh, it's just exploding. The development is, is crazy. And I hear about what's happening you know, a lot of new startups contact me and uh, want to tell me what they're working on. Uh, and s most of the time it's telling me in confidence they don't want me to repeat what they're working on. But I can tell you this, there's a lot. There's a lot. It'll, it'll make your head explode to know what's being worked on right now. There's so oh, much in so many areas. It's really, I'm really an exciting time. I'm looking forward to all of it. Let me let me make one note. If you if you do have an Android phone and you decide to check out one of the uh, couple of Bitcoin apps that are currently in existence, just be careful because these are really early alphas That's and right. it's totally possible to lose your Bitcoins. Yeah. Uh, buddy here actually lost his because he downloaded the Bitcoin application and uh, sent some funds to the phone. They didn't show up, so he decided, well, you know what, I'll try. I'll try clearing the application data in my phone to see if that fixes it. But that actually just deleted his wallet, so he lost the coins forever. Oh. So, it's wow. Up. Be careful. I hope it was a trivial amount of coins. Yeah, they say that in the market is to be sure to just use a trivial amount of tiny, tiny amount of coins just to uh, for testing. And that the Bitcoin uh, app for by Bitcoin Labs in the market right now, it says clearly it's an alpha thing and not to use it for any serious coins. But that's one of the highest priorities right now is to really um, improve it and make it real solid so that it can be used every day. I think there are a couple um, Bitcoin apps, full clients in the Android market now. But um, yeah, it's happening really fast. You know, so you, on your road trip, the price of gasoline was probably going up, but the, price, the value of Bitcoin was going up much faster, right? Yeah, sure. Were you, where were you when it hit $30, or was that, were you already finished with your trip by then? Ooh, $30, uh, it hit $30, when I was between Las Vegas and San Diego, I believe. <laughs> in San Diego, we watched it crash back down to, uh, I think it only went down to 20. I think by the time it dropped back down to 12, 15, I was, I was further north up towards LA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's so new. Yeah. I, of course, there's giant volatility. I think it's going to go further down. I mean, I'm not sure if it'll drop below 10 ever again. But it, it very well, very well might, and when it does, I'm gonna buy more. Yeah, exactly. exactly. When it goes down, buy more. That's when it's on sale. That's what we say. So, what was your most challenging uh, day or night or part of your trip? One one pretty challenging point was in uh, it was in Kansas. Uh, I've I've nothing really against Kansas or Can Can Kansasians, Kansas, <laughs> but uh, it's it's pretty boring. Uh, Pretty boring. I ended up in Wichita, and I, I didn't know anybody in Kansas, and nobody I talked to was too interested in, in bitcoins. And I, I found myself running a little low on gas. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I pulled out my Shell gas card. I got a, I got this gas card from a guy named Bitcoin Exchange on the forums, who will sell you a gift card for anything you want. Right. And uh, so I, I paid, uh, I don't remember the exchange rates, but I paid some small amount of bitcoins for a $100 gas card. And... Just kept in my wallet until I needed an emergency, until I had an emergency. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Wichita, Kansas, and I'm running out of gas, and I don't have anywhere to sleep for the night. So I go to the local Shell station, and all of their pumps are out of gas. And they say, oh, you can try the Shell down the street. So I go check out that Shell, and it's actually closed. It's now a Sitgo, and there's, they don't take Shell gas cards at Sitgo. Mm -hmm. So I do some math, and I figure I have just barely enough to drive about... 60 miles north to, uh, I believe it was Grand Junction, Kansas. 
So it's it's by this point 11 p.m. and I'm I'm doing like 50 miles an hour, driving very slowly, very carefully, not using my brakes at all, just trying to conserve some gas mileage. Mm -hmm. But uh, about three quarters of the way through the trip, I'm I'm at empty, and I'm wondering why why I'm at empty because I, I I did the math. I should have been able to get there. It turns out I've been driving in third gear instead of drive. Oh. So I was actually like losing efficiency because you know I'm burning I'm at, it. I need 2200 RPM instead of 1500 RPM. <laughs> right. So I, I pull into this gas station with my needle below empty and I just start talking to everybody who walks by at midnight saying, hey, uh, you got a second? Kind of stranded here. And eventually I found this, this guy. He was going off to Iraq and he was about to be deployed in about a week. And I, I explained Bitcoin. He was pretty enthusiastic and I told him, hey, look, I mean, I, I can, if you, if you want in on this, like I can give you a Bitcoin and you can buy me a gallon of gas so I can get over there and use my Shell gas card. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he was he was happy to help me. Uh, <laughs> I, gave, I gave him a paper Bitcoin, actually. I think I still have one of these. A paper so, Bitcoin? Yeah, and what, you yeah. printed these out before you left? <laughs> now, this is this is from <coughs> Alabama. Uh, this, this was made by a guy named Bitcoin2Cash. And I don't think he ever publicly released these. They're more of a promotional item. But I bought a few of them for him, and they've they've been really handy just to go around and and give people some something they can touch. Right. Tangible, that's right? That's that I didn't I didn't really expect. There's a lot of people who don't really understand the concept of a, a digital object because you know it's not really there. It's just ones and zeros in a computer right. system. So that's kind of hard to grasp. So it's kind of nice to be able to say, all right, this isn't really a Bitcoin, but it's worth a Bitcoin. You can have it. <laughs> Give me a gallon of gas. Mm -hmm. Is that like a? Does it have a private key under a scratch off? Is that what that is? Uh, what it actually has, it has a little code under a scratch off. And if you take the code and you go to Bitcoin2Cash.com/redeem, you can paste in the code and you can paste in your own Bitcoin address mm -hmm. and. Uh, the guy who runs the site sends you a Bitcoin automatically. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a paper backed by Bitcoin. Yeah, sure. Effect. Yeah. Okay. And psychologically, it's easy to sell something like that when you have something tangible that you can hand it over yeah. as opposed to trying to convince them and then tell them, okay, it will all happen in the cyberspace. Yeah. So um, when, you, when you didn't have any, I mean, was there ever a point when you did, just didn't have any dollars and you couldn't find anybody to accept a Bitcoin? Um, well, after LA, it got harder. But after LA, I've been allowing myself to spend dollars. Uh. So I, I was actually surprised. I would have figured that San Francisco, at least, would have been like super heavy into, into tech stuff. And while the, well, the people at, uh, at Noisebridge were really enthusiastic, people on the street were, you know, less excited about it than I would have thought. Uh, 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 let me think. Not really. For the most part, I've been able to either pay with Bitcoins or just talk to people and find a couch to crash for a night successfully. Cool. So you so after LA, you headed north towards San Francisco, and it actually got harder. This is interesting. Through California. And then, what, then after San Francisco, where did you go? After San Francisco, I kept going north up to Portland, which is where I am now. Oh, okay. All right. So, now how long have you been in Portland? Uh, I got here about two weeks ago. Two and weeks. I, I was going to keep going up to Seattle and Vancouver, B.C. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like many people who live in Portland, I, I kind of was passing through and decided to stay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm now a Portland resident. Really? It's, is it that? Is it because it's so beautiful there, or why? What made you decide well, to stay? Well, weather's really nice for now. It apparently starts raining around October and keeps raining until June or so. But I don't <laughs> mind rain. And uh, mm -hmm. everyone I everyone I met here has been really cool. Out mm -hmm. of out of twenty five states, Portland is the chillest town. Cool. And really, that's my that's my only metric that I really care about right now. Wow. It's there's a lot of people here who I would like to get to know better. Oh, that's great. So did you end up going to Florida? Because I remember last time we spoke, you weren't sure because of the gas and all that. What was your question? Did I Did you what? end up going to Florida? No, I skipped Florida. Oh, okay. Uh, so you just went down through the Carolinas and then cut it across from there? 
I cut across uh, here. Let me let me sum up my route because it was pretty circuitous. So I started out near Hartford, Connecticut, and then went to Boston. From Boston, I went to Schenectady, New York, and then down to New York City. From there, I went to Washington, D.C., and uh, driving in D.C. was terrible. D.C., New York, and Boston were my least favorite driving experiences. <laughs> Worst city in L.A. or Portland. But anyway, after, after D.C., I kept going south through... Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Carborough, North Carolina, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and ended up taking a, a fairly heroic drive all the way from Raleigh through Charlottesville, South Carolina, I'm sorry, Charlotte, South Carolina, uh, all the way down to Huntsville, Alabama, which was, oh man, it was like 12 hour drive. Yeah. It, it wasn't yeah. too much fun. But, so I skipped, I skipped a lot of the South. But then I stayed in Alabama for a couple of weeks after that tornado hit. Uh, mm -hmm. I ended up sticking around and helping clean up a trailer park. And mm -hmm. from there, I went to New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Houston, Austin, uh, Denton, Texas, which is just north of Dallas-Fort Worth, up to Fayetteville, Arkansas to meet another Bitcoiner, uh, BitcoinBulletin.com. Then across to Denver, uh, where I met up to some family members. I actually went skydiving in Denver. That was pretty cool. Nice. So yeah, from Denver, I went to Salt Lake, and then Vegas, and San Diego, then uh, Mission Viejo, which is a suburb of L.A., and uh, San Fernando Valley, also in L.A., and then up Pacific Coast Highway to San Francisco, and north to Portland. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, it's it's been it's been it's been a very fun trip. Three I've months, huh? Three months altogether. I'm sorry. Was it about three months altogether? Yeah, it's been three months and two days. <laughs> as of now. So, what was it? You what was your number one goal that you really hoped to achieve by taking on the Great American Bitcoin road trip? Spread the word of Bitcoin <laughs> as an evangelist. Like Johnny Appleseed, right? It's planting this. Yeah, you're not tree. the first person to make that comparison, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, you? So you feel like um, like you have evangelized it? Have you have you had inquiries from media or or? Um, I'd like to hope so. Yeah, I talked to CBC.ca for an interview, and Al Jazeera mentioned that they wanted to talk to me, but then they never returned my emails. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you want Al Jazeera, check out Bruce's coverage of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's see what else. A couple of local radio stations, uh, K Talk in Salt Lake City. Actually, that was a cool interview. That's on my blog. Uh, we we talked to Edwin Vieira, who's a constitutional lawyer, and what we were talking about was uh, how how the federal government of the U.S. has really overstepped its its you know its responsibilities and taken over all kinds of industries, like the TSA. It's it's, yeah. it's you know not really constitution. We're supposed to have a right to travel unimpeded. Exactly. And we, we can't. So we were talking for an hour about the current situation of the federal government and how you might be able to reduce its power while staying within a constitutional framework. Right. So if you're politically minded, it was I thought it was a pretty interesting interview. Uh, I didn't talk too much on there. There's another guy, Clint Richardson, who runs reality blogger uh, wordpress.com, I think. And that's a really cool site, too, if you're interested in uh, some political research. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, it sounds like you got a lot of attention from from this. That's great. And um, now, <laughs> like, do you have? Did you have a lot of friends back here on the East Coast? That and what do they think about you taking on this trip and relocating and and all that? Well, they thought I was crazy at first, and <laughs> some of them still think I'm crazy now because. <laughs> It's weird. I'm, I've been living without dollars, and that's that's a fundamentally bizarre concept to many many people. Right. Because you know, right now in our society, dollars are the end, mm -hmm. and you know, money is the end. You try to yeah. get more money. That's the goal of life. It's right. like it's like World of Warcraft. You keep on going up until you have as much money as you can. Right. But I don't think that's a very useful thing to do with money. I would much rather just. Uh, Use it as a means to an end, where the end <coughs> is and a better world. Mm -hmm. I think Bitcoin is is very good for that, just because it's democratic. I mean, it's a fair it's a fair system. 
Mm. That's still money. That's honestly why I love Bitcoin so much. It's still money. It's just a new. It's just the people's money as opposed to the the central bankers' money, right? The government. Sure, you can say that. I guess. <laughs> so, like, are are you still living on bitcoins only? Uh, no. I'm using dollars now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I am spending bitcoins if I find somebody who wants some bitcoins, but I'm mm. trying to save them until uh, until the price goes back up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I noticed you posted that you were in Oregon and you were willing to work for Bitcoin and do whatever. Yeah, I'm actually, at the moment, I'm living out of my car and uh, just exploring the city. Uh, I would really like to find a room or a couple of rooms to rent for Bitcoins. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you happen to know anyone in the Portland area, uh, you should either contact me on Twitter at the real Plato. Uh, you could email me, Plato at subvert.me. And I'd be glad to, to talk over some negotiations for rooms. Uh, but even even living out of my car, Portland is an awesome city. The weather's mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, everybody's friendly. There's low crime. So I'm, I'm happier. Yeah. I'm so, and you can also be reached at therealplato.com, right? Yeah, that's my blog. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm stuck in kind of a catch-22 because I have all these cool projects I want to do involving like coding. Like for instance, I want to take therealplato.com and set it up so you can see my Google Plus feed and you can see my Twitter feed and you can see my Tumblr feed and you can see my pictures that I've taken. Just put them all on one page, mm -hmm. and that's not really too complicated to do. I I, I want to just you know write it in Python or something, mm -hmm. but it's 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 hard to code when I'm sitting in my car. Right. So I would like to find just some workspace where I can sit for hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And just just work. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. What about the ha the this group the uh, uh, where you are right now the hacker space? Silo. Yeah, that's actually uh, an option that I'm <coughs> just, uh, I use. I just found these guys recently, but this is this is a really great workspace. So mm -hmm. I've solved half my problem there. That's cool. <laughs> and um, and you want to stick to more Bitcoin related projects, or it doesn't matter. Or so here's something that I really love to do. I'd like to I'd like to start the Bit, the Portland Bitcoin Foundation, and what this would do I don't know. It would probably be a nonprofit. I don't know how you get money. Probably solicit donations. But there's so much stuff. Like Portland's the perfect city for bitcoins because there's a lot of starving artists here. There's a lot of bohemians here. There's a lot of techies here, and Bitcoin fits all these niches perfectly because you can have artists who are charging bitcoins for their art. You can have coffee shops who are accepting bitcoins for coffee. Mm -hmm. You could have, you know, coders who are making websites for the coffee shops and setting it up so they can donate bitcoins. And this this would be really fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm envisioning a, a way to, uh, I don't know, it would be cool if you had cities competing. Like, how, how, how <laughs> much Portland use bitcoins? Can they use more bitcoins than San Francisco? <laughs> Try and set up a race to the number one get city. it up fastest. That's right. You know, New York is, uh, we, we're hosting here at Only One TV, we're hosting the world's first Bitcoin conference and world expo 2011 NYC here, August 18th to the 21st. If you go to bitcoinconference.com, you'll get all the details and you can register. All, all the details are there now, bitcoinconference.com. But, um, but yeah, that's a great idea that we should have a, a competition among cities to see who, which can um, manifest the, the a grassroots Bitcoin movement, um, you know, and really take hold. I'm sure the college towns might do well, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Columbus, Ohio, and places like that. It'd be very fascinating. I think we need to wait maybe another month or two for, uh, for instance, like we need a solid, we need a rock solid Android client that you can't really lose your coins easily. Right. So. We're gonna have to wait for a couple, a couple extra evolutions of yeah. its current client. Figure out what we need to do to to just make it better. Yeah. Because really, the biggest problem, as I see with Bitcoin right now, is that it's nobody really tells newbies about the risks. For instance, you can lose the coins in your wallet if you if you make 101 actions because it doesn't back up more than 100 keys at first. Right. So it's possible to send. All right, maybe you have 100 bitcoins and you decide to send one, and the other 99 get sent to a change address. And if that's the 101st transaction in your wallet, that change address isn't backed up. So if you then delete your wallet, your backup won't have those coins. And that's not <coughs> commonly 
should really be on the front page of Bitcoin.org saying like, hey, look, you have to understand this wallet security stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I don't think it can take off to mainstream until we've solved that problem. Like, yeah. it shouldn't, well, it should be much harder for people to, to screw up than it is right now. Right. But, I mean, we're seeing more and more developers who are joining the project. And we're seeing all kinds of awesome stuff happening. So, I think it's, I think that that'll be, I think it, it'll be ready for mainstream in a couple of months. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. for sure. There's All those things are in development to solve those problems. Have you heard, of, did you hear about um, uh, the ability for them to derive more addresses from an existing address without having to use the app to create that? I don't know. I forgot what they call it now. But there's this derivative address ability. One of, the, one of our episodes of the Bitcoin show where we had uh, Stefan from... Uh, Switzerland on mm-hmm. he talked about this it's like sort of a recent discovery only from a couple months ago so these kinds of things can be included in the app there the new version of the of the uh, standard Bitcoin client is um, you know obviously in development and a, lo- all, a lot of this security if not all we'll resolve, of this yeah, security issues. issues are going to be resolved so that and the new versions of the Android app yeah I think within just <laughs> a really short time within a month or two uh, that stuff will be history. Everyone will have the n- access to the new apps that will have fixed those problems. But I mean, and you, when you think about how fast this has all happened, it's just a miracle that it that uh, these problems even are being corrected so fast. Mm-hmm. And that oh yeah, I mean we've surmounted most of the challenges that we've seen so far very successfully. You know, mm-hmm. Mt. Gox got shut down for a week and the price was right back where it was before the hack. I thought it would drop significantly. I thought it was going down to like three, five dollars because people would lose confidence. But everyone lost confidence in Mt. Gox, but not in Bitcoin itself because the system is secure. The system is good. Right. Uh, M. Andrix actually just wrote up a very good uh, analysis, something like, uh, let's see, Re- Bitcoin resilient internet payment. On his blogger, and it's it's talking about how there's many many good reasons that Bitcoin is a strong system, and even if one of those reasons fails or something, uh, maybe transaction fees go way up. The other six reasons are still rock solid, and in his opinion, as in mine, like it's such a resilient system that's going to be around for yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, I think a- I think that even I mean it's my opinion too, but. Uh, I don't think that the Mt. Gox thing has been affected as much. I mean, if you look at their trades, they're still trading at a high volume. And I, and I think part of the reason is because it, Bitcoin has such momentum already that there's so many new users that it's not really affected like the way negatively like we thought. Well, yeah. I mean, up to a point, it's still tiny. We still have, I don't know, the exact current stat, but I believe it's still less than 0.1% of PayPal's user base. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of room to grow. And right. every time somebody else comes into Bitcoin, the current Bitcoins get more valuable because, you know, that's that's how a, yeah. s- s- a money supply works. Exactly. It's still a drop in the bucket. But, um, it, you know, yeah, what, what you're saying is like even with this Mt. Gro- Mt. Gox, uh, you know, had 90, at least 90% market share at the time and, it, you know, crashed, got hacked and all that. It's like barely a blip in the value, and and the and now that it's back up, it's uh, hardly hardly affected the um, trade volume. It's amazing, but the resi- the resiliency of Bitcoin, I and in fact you have a hard time finding someone who can give you reasons why Bitcoin is bad, like problems with Bitcoin or uh, kind of a Bitcoin skeptic. It's there really aren't very many, and uh, I'm looking for some actually because I'd like to have some on as a guest on the show. So that we can discuss it and debate it, but there really aren't very many. I disagree. I see skeptics everywhere. Really? And most of them, most of them do have the same title or arguments that aren't very good arguments. Mm-hmm. But there's a there's many many skeptics. I mean, just look on the Bitcoin forums. On the Bitcoin forums? Sure. There's skeptics I mean, on there. Okay. Yeah. Every every day, there's like twenty new posts by noobs who are saying like. Bitcoin will fail because it's not sexually <laughs> mapped. Well, I, what I, I guess what I mean what is like it. someone with credentials, someone like who is a writer or blogger or a technologist or somebody that's not just a you know a, a, you know whatever a, a uh, what do they call it a flamer you know <laughs> but somebody who's actually got some kind of credentials or credibility who actually um, 
is anti-Bitcoin. And so there was one person, I forgot his name, uh, on the Al Jazeera piece, something able um, from Wired. I'm going to try and track him oh, yeah. down because, um, you know, he just said it's a wacky, crazy currency. That's yeah, he said, why would anyone use it? I just don't see the implementation. Mm. So, uh, but he didn't really explain anything beyond that. It's a wild, wacky currency, but he didn't explain why uh, he sees, you know, what, what kind of problems he sees with it. But I would like to have some people like that on to uh, discuss it with them and see how much they really know about it and uh, debate a little bit. Yeah, I think people are just speculating, you know, reasons why it wouldn't work, but no real hard facts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, it's anybody's guess, of course. I mean, you could say this will never catch on or that will never catch on, but, you know, <laughs> their guess is as good as anyone else's as far as predicting the future. But as far as real substantial uh, pros and cons, benefits and drawbacks, they, they, you know, there really aren't very many. So I would like to ask you, so what's your thought now after your trip uh, of the Bitcoin community as a whole? Okay, let me tell you, at the beginning of this trip, I was, uh, I was not confident in Bitcoin. <coughs> I thought there was about a 90% chance that Bitcoin would fail and a 10% chance that it would succeed. I think that in, in around May, in the month of May, we hit critical mass already. I think at this point, it's reversed. I think there's more of like an 85% chance that it'll stick around mm -hmm. and a 15% chance that it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 85% that it'll stick around, 15% chance that it'll fail. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. You didn't mention that before. Wow. And so what do you think about the community then? Uh, well... The community, the community is awesome. Uh, everyone I met on my trip has been awesome. Uh, the guys in Mission Viejo, California, were fantastic ghosts. Everybody, I, I didn't, I didn't meet a single person along my way who was, uh, you know, a bad person. Mm -hmm. right, right. So everyone kind of like got together to help you and make sure that you got through. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> They want and, to support I mean, your cause. Even, even just on IRC, everybody everybody is a great community. They're talking, helping everybody out. Uh, I mean, it's starting to grow. It's starting. I think we need a new, a better, uh, a better place for community members to interact. And uh, I'm actually I'm actually in the planning stages of a project that I'm calling Subverse. And what I want this to be is uh, it, it'll be like a social network where people can. Well, I mean, the core will be a social network for subversive types, for people who, who think that the current system, our status quo of, you know, politicians and corporate plutocracy and all, all that stuff, I, I, for one, disagree with that. I think that there's many better alternatives. And I want to make a context for us to, to discuss that and figure out ways to do it. And I think one of the best ways to do that is just start using Bitcoins for trade. So here's, here's the idea. You make a social network and you set it up so that you can register anonymously with the GPG key and then, if, if, if I want to sell you my guitar for Bitcoins, I can just say, hey, I'm selling one guitar, it's worth 10 Bitcoin, um, and I will only deal with people with X reputation or above. Because as we've seen with Bitcoin OTC, you can make a reputation system, you can make a web of trust where you can have anonymity but still have reputation. So I'm saying make a social network based on that idea. Mm -hmm. Right. And then their reputation would be built into the social network and then that you could buy and sell things with, with these. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So again, this is like this is still only in my head. Uh, yeah. If you want, if you if you're interested, you can join uh, my IRC channel to talk about it a bit. Uh, that's pound pound subverse on Freenode. That's S U B V E R S E. Uh, you can also just follow my Twitter, and I'll make some announcements when this moves into some concrete stage. Because mm -hmm. again, right now it's just an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good idea. Cool. Well, so really, that's, that's what I want to do in Portland. I mean, I would like to find a place to live and just uh, sit down and start coding this. And really, the only obstacle right now is, like, where to live. Right. <laughs> you need a place to live for Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Real estate. I well, want to buy a ranch in Montana for Bitcoins, too. But I'm probably going to have to wait a few years till they're worth, you know, 10000 each. Right. You can buy mm -hmm. your own place then. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let me take a break really quick and uh, thank our sponsors again, um, who obviously they bring us to you every day uh, to, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, the Bitcoin Show, Monday through Friday. They are usgoldcoins.com. 
That's 1-800-HOT-COIN. Andy Gauss is the money expert. He'll help you diversify your, ex your uh, investments by buying U.S. rare gold and silver coins. 1-800-HOT-COIN. That's usgoldcoins.com. And Mezzy Grill. M-E-Z-E grill.com. Mezzy Grill, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. Mezzy Grill. And Carpe Viam. C-A-R-P-E-V-M.com. Carpe Viam.com. Seize your market. Say it with video. These are the pros. They'll help you do it. And TradeHill.com. The most um, complete exchange site online that has the, the, the most varieties of ways to get money in and out. Um, with no limits and minimal fees, 10% uh, off your fees for life with the uh, referral code TH-R141. It's on your screen now, TH-R141. And MountGox.com. I didn't mention before Mount Gox is running a special deal um, with very, very low rates for the uh, time being. So check it out, MTGOX, MountGox.com, the leader in online exchange. We thank all of the, our sponsors for bringing us to you. Yes, thank you. So, so what are your, um, uh, I guess you've already told us what your plans are for the immediate future. And um, how, how, I, have you, is there a vibrant community there of people that you've met already in Portland that are into Bitcoin? Is there, like, do they have a meetup or anything like that going on there? I went to a meetup the other night and met maybe a half dozen pretty cool people. Like I said, most of the people at Brain Silo are familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And there's there's many people here who have never heard of it but would be very interested. Just because, you know, it's it's the sense of community in Portland is remarkable. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoin is really a community currency. Yeah. So it, it's a perfect fit. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, it's really exciting. We're, we're going to have to definitely stay in touch. And now that we're, we're up to speed here, we're doing this show every single day, Monday through Friday. We'll, um, we'll have you back on again in a, a while and uh, touch base with you and see what's happened in the, in the meantime with your social network and um, the, uh, you know, all the projects that you've got going there. And, um, Excellent. Yes, so, I'd be glad to. <laughs> so glad that your trip went so well. Evangelizing Bitcoin. Imagine that. This is the first ever in the world. I wonder if anybody else in um, Europe or Asia or any other places in the world have taken on such a, an adventurous trek to be able to cross their nation using only Bitcoin. I was talking to somebody in Britain who was hoping to drive from the very bottom of Great Britain all the way, excuse me, all the way up to the very top. And his plan was actually to, uh, to fund it entirely with Bitcoins that he generated through mining. He was planning on putting two mining rigs in the trunk of his car. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. I don't think he did it. So, <laughs> Not yet. I was going to say, mining rigs in the trunk of his car. Oh, my gosh. Really cool. Maybe he's waiting for it to spike up a little bit to get yeah. moving. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it seems like, wow, he would have to run generators to, <laughs> to mine the coins. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of power. Yeah, that would take a lot of gas. And money. over there, the petroleum prices are, <laughs> are, can definitely put you out, but if Bitcoin keeps going up, then it's probably okay. Okay, here's another, here's another idea that I'd like to do with Bitcoins. So I think the perfect industry to use Bitcoins is alcohol fuels. Imagine this. Imagine you have a community where you have some farmers who are growing corn to feed their cows. Mm -hmm. And you have another guy who makes alcohol stills. So the guy who makes alcohol stills rents it out to the farmer for some bitcoins. And the farmer puts his corn into the still. Out comes mash and alcohol. He feeds the mash back to his cows. And the cows are actually healthier because they don't have to digest the starch. And he takes the alcohol and gives it to the guy who owns the alcohol truck. The guy with the alcohol truck uses bitcoins for, you know, to transport stuff around accept payments, he brings it to the alcohol fueling station. And at the fueling station, I can drive up and fill my car with alcohol fuels. Mm -hmm. And there's a mechanic, you know, nearby who it's Bitcoins as well to adjust your engine timings and uh, set up so your car just as much efficiency out of ether fuels as it does to gasoline. But this is what Brazil did. Brazil doesn't have any gasoline because they switched their cars over to use alcohol fuels from sugar. And it wouldn't it wouldn't be too hard to set up this infrastructure in the U.S. And I think Bitcoin would be a great way to do it because you'd be able to win, you know regulation, you'd be able to you know all the inefficiencies of the dollar. 
you break it up a little bit. What was the last thing you said? Oh, just that Bitcoin is more efficient than dollars. Mm -hmm. So for, you know, sustainability, this is, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Interesting. There's, <laughs> there's no limit to the creativity and the yeah. ideas. Your, uh, your background is electrical engineering, I remember? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, I just want to make sure in case people were wondering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you know of cool electrical engineering jobs, especially anything in the solar sector, I, I am more than willing to take a look at it. But uh, getting stuck behind a desk job doing something I don't want to do for eight hours a day is really the last thing on my mind right now. Right. But uh, yeah, by all means, uh, whenever I get around to finally putting all this stuff up on therealplato.com, I'll toss a resume up there as well, uh, contact information, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, you, you haven't heard the last of Plato yet. What about becoming a Bitcoin dealer where you're uh, exchanging dollars for Bitcoins, you know, for a small fee? Have you thought about doing yeah, that? I, I could do that. I mean, for small amounts, if anyone in Portland needs some Bitcoins, uh, I can use three more bucks. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people, I know a lot of people are starting their own businesses that, where they're charging, you know, anywhere from 2 to 5 to 10 percent for uh, just for the convenience of letting people buy Bitcoins for cash. Just keeping some bitcoins, keeping some cash on hand, and buying and selling bitcoins for cash for a percentage, just for the convenience sake, so that uh, they don't have to uh, go through all the, you know, the hassles or whatever. If there are any of, of um, banking or finding people, you know, otherwise. Sure. I mean, another thing that I'd like to do now that I'm here is for any business that's interested in taking bitcoins, I can help them out by explaining how the system works and help set up some software and help, you know, put it on their website and get all the, you know, infrastructure out of the way. Right. What I would like to do, I would really like to get in touch with, with a printer. I want to find somebody who can print me business cards and stickers and just uh, promotional material in exchange for bitcoins. Mm -hmm. So I tried to find somebody on Twitter uh, a while back and they weren't interested. <coughs> but if anybody owns a print shop, <coughs> Oh yeah. Uh, meeting with these, maybe a couple thousand. Uh, please get in touch with me again. Twitter the real Plato or email Plato at subvert dot me. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there are a lot of printers and printing companies that would accept Bitcoin. There's got to be. I just yeah. I haven't looked too hard. Well, I, I saw on Craigslist because I have a, a an alert when anything Bitcoin comes up on Craigslist, and I think there's already people yeah doing consulting type of services where they help you set it all up and. And get you going with in the Bitcoin world with merchant accounts, etc. Yeah, sure. So, so definitely. Let me, uh, let me take this back. Advertise so, uh, there. That social, that social network idea that I had. You'd have a directory. Uh, there's there's a project called Black and Yellow Pages that I heard about on uh, Agorist Radio's Cypherpunk podcast. Uh -huh. And actually, that's that's like the current bleeding edge of uh, digital freedoms and digital liberties. So if you're interested in learning more about you know subversive tech. Mm -hmm. Check out Cypherpunk's podcast with a D at the end. Uh, anyway, there's this project called Black and Yellow Pages. The idea is that uh, tradespeople, craftsmen, anybody who has a service to sell, they list themselves in this directory and they say, hey, check, out, check this out. Here's my GPG ID so you can check my reputation in any system you want. And I'm an electrical contractor. I install wiring. If you need wiring installed for bitcoins, here are my rates. I can travel this far. If you need a plumber, you should check out my buddy Joe. Mm -hmm. And Joe is also listed on the same site. He's listing his own services, and he says, "Oh, hey, I'm willing to do X, Y, and Z." So, I mean, anybody who's a Bitcoin contractor is willing to set up companies, they could put themselves in there as well. Absolutely, yeah, that's a great idea. You should do that. <laughs> Good. There's. I, I, I mean, I've been thinking about this idea of this this project, Subverse project, for uh, I don't know since like January, mm -hmm. and I've I've evolved a lot of ideas about it, and I'm. Really, what I'm trying to do now is write up a, a PDF that explains like how I think it should work, and uh, just put it online somewhere, get some alpha testers, and uh, start going. Yeah, there are proprietary platforms where you can set up a social network, you know, instantly, like Ning.com and stuff. But they're not, they're not necessarily free, and they're not, and they're super closed and proprietary. But then there, yeah, yeah. there are some open source versions, but they're, I'm not sure if they're ready for prime time. Not really. So. Yeah, uh, maybe somebody has a suggestion of some sort of free open source software that's that's the the yeah, most stable. Uh, coding all the stuff that I'm talking about is not going to be easy. Uh, it's going to yeah. require some some effort of coding. 
Mm-hmm. I'd like to try and find a way to get some funding, maybe listed on the Global Bitcoin Stock Exchange. And uh, I heard about this algorithm in San Diego. I think it may be a proprietary algorithm, but it's called PyTrust. And the way this works is that you have a group, let's say there's five people coding an open source project, mm-hmm. and you have to somehow split up 100 Bitcoins among these five people. Uh-huh. So what they do, they, they rate each other and say like how much each person thinks the others should get out of this pool. And it's, it's sort of democratic, so if everybody agrees that somebody is very important to the project, first of all, they get more of the pool, and second, that person's votes count more. Wow. So untrusted people don't have the opportunity to screw up the pool, but trusted people have more clout. And this seems like a really cool algorithm. That does. It has for, for my project, because I, if there's any centralization is bad, I'd like to find a way to set this up so it can be coded with nobody in the middle. Pi, it's and called Pi Trust? Coders. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's called Pi Trust? Pi Trust, yes. Pi Trust. I'm going to have to get that information from you too. Because, yeah, that seems like a, that would be, I can think of a lot of uses for mm-hmm. that. For any, any type of a business where there are uh, multiple entities and you want to, uh, pro, you know, uh, I don't know, I guess relative division of a pie based on their importance in contributing to the project, whether it's an open source project or a, a business, it could be anything. That yeah, seems like a really clever anything. idea. This can make an open source company where you don't need management, you don't need accountants. You can get rid of all the crap that has to deal with dollars right. just by splitting up a pool of bitcoins in a democratic fashion. Yeah. As long as everybody agrees, like, oh, that's a fair way to do it, let's try it. You, mm-hmm. you wouldn't need all those extra layers, and you'd have much more efficiency. Pi trust. Okay, I'm going to Google that for sure. Algorithm. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Well, thanks for joining us, Plato. We really appreciate you taking the time uh, to hook up Skype for us and, uh, and revisit uh, your trip and all your adventures. And we'll be in touch with you and we'll uh, want an update maybe in a month or so and see how things are going for you in Portland, especially Great. when well, the rainy season too. hits. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Chris. Uh, yes. I appreciate your time. And uh, look talk to you again in the future. All right. Sure Thanks, thing. Pedro. Thanks. <laughs> Great to see you. Take care. Peace. All right. Thanks for joining Peace us all. We'll see you same time tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern at the Bitcoin Show. Thank you.